Oh, this what they've been waiting on? Ha ha ha. It's the Gringo and Tom Show. Let's go. It's the Gringo and Tom Show. Y'all ready to go? Late night sports talk. Y'all ready to go? Gringo be hitting this point. Hitting this points. Tom coming in and he won't disappoint. Nah. I be swinging for the fences. <sighs> And striking you out yeah. Now let's see what this is all about Let go. It's the Gringo and Tom show Y'all ready to go It's the Gringo and Tom show Y'all ready to go Ready to go River ready to go It's the Gringo and Tom show Y'all ready to go Hey, yeah. It's done right about now Hello everybody Welcome to the Gringo and Tom show my name is Gringo with my boy Tom over here. What's up? There we go. Okay. Today is Monday, March 29th. We are a couple of days away from the games actually counting. So here we go. Opening day is coming soon. I'm super excited. I don't know about you, Tom, but this is going to be a great season. Oh, yeah, dude. Big day is almost here. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. There we go. So, um, who do you have on today? Oh, your so shirt. Yes. Mariano Rivera. Yeah. Can't Mo? Show you, but. Okay. You got Mo today. All right. Just like Mo, we're about, to, we're about to do a great job of entering and closing uh, this podcast. It'll be a great segue. So we're going to start off today with storylines of the weekend, storylines of the weekend. Today, we're first going to be talking about Luke Voigt's injury and how much of an impact it is for the New York Yankees. Tom, please talk about what your first opinion was when you heard that Luke Voigt was going to be out for a good amount of time. Bro, I was like, here we go again. Another Yankee injury to another really important player. But it was a lot worse at first than I thought it actually – like, I thought it was much worse than it actually was. Apparently, it was only a partially torn – what was it? His – it was in his knee, right? The, yes, yes. Called? That's the injury that he suffered uh, That's he, that's been lingering. This is meniscus. Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why they waited till now to do something about it, but at least they did it now and not even later than they did. So there's that. But the whole thing is that means Jay Bruce makes the team. Yep. Jay Bruce will make the team for the New York Yankees, along with Tyler Wade, Michael King, and Mike Talkman. Those are the uh, – the bench players for the New York Yankees with Jay Bruce, obviously being the starting first baseman. Uh, how do you think things will go for, uh, for Jay Bruce? Uh, it's, it seems like it'll be a pretty tough um, transition from, you know, okay, I'm only getting a couple reps uh, for maybe a pinch hitting opportunities for the first couple of weeks to now basically being the starting first baseman for the Yankees. Yeah. He's the guy, dude. They're going to be relying on him every day at bats. I mean, sometimes they might have LeMay who play first, but yeah, he's he's the guy, and I, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I'm not the biggest Jay Bruce fan. I think he'll do fine. If anybody remembers Chris Carter back in 2017, let's hope he's better than that because that was a disaster. Oof, that was atrocious. Oh, boy. Oof. They're similar players, and it makes me a little scared that he could turn into that. But, but think, here's the thing, though. Here's the dream. This is the dream. dream. That left field porch right there. Paradise. Power. Paradise for lefties. He's got that tailor-made swing. Seeing a lot of balls hit those bleachers. You could dream on it, man. But I don't know. I think he's not going to do all that much. His, his impact's limited. But he'll do just enough, I guess, until Voight comes back. It's four to six weeks, hopefully. I mean, we all know. See, that's another thing. That's another thing. When when Yankees doctors report on the statuses of Yankees players, it's more or less saying, "Oh, it's just a little boo boo. It's not that big of a deal," <laughs> till it turns into something that's very concerning 
to where Yankees fans, when they when they see the news of oh, so Aaron Judge is only going to be there for a, he's going to be injured for a couple of weeks, then it turns into a month, then a month and a half, and then we're all like, you said it was going to be just a little boo boo. Like, what's up? It's wild. It's so wild. I just, I can just only hope that it's not too bad that he's got a speedy recovery and he comes back a hundred percent. Cause I know those yes. things can have residual effects if they're not rehabbed properly. I think I can just hope, hope for the best. That's all we can really say at this point. One thing to note about that injuries though, about that injury is, I don't know if some of you people who watch us, um, if you guys remember Grady Sizemore, Grady Sizemore suffered from that injury. And after that 2009, 2010 se- seasons, he basically just, that injury just took a hold of his career and he just wasn't able to be the same. Yeah. He had a severe version of that. I, yeah. The good news is that Voight already wasn't a speedster. He already- oh yeah relied on for his speed. Grady Sizemore, dude, that guy, he was a tremendous athlete. He One-in-a-lifetime player. Oh, man, he was... I think he had a Hall of Fame trajectory. He was like Mookie Betts of 10 years ago. That guy could play baseball. It was so sad to see him get out of the league at such a young age, but that's what injuries can do. Let's hope Voight's all right. And the Yankee Doc on our legs. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the news. Jay Bruce will be on the team along with Wade, King, and Talkman. So I'm actually going to create a little bit of a, a little discussion here uh, during um, the storylines for this weekend. Um, Tom, um, in terms of um, the Yankees picking King over Davey Garcia, um, what is your opinion about that? What is your opinion about that? I think it's a little surprising, to be honest. I mean. I don't think they ex- we expected Garcia to make the team, but I didn't expect King to make the team. I thought he was going to start in AAA, but nope, they, he made the team. And a little shocking, I would have liked to see Garcia over him. I know they want to control Garcia's workload and his innings, but, you know, Mike King's looked pretty shaky in the spring, and I just don't know how – I don't know how much of an impact he has if he's not able to locate his best stuff, so – We'll see how well this goes, how long he stays on the team. It could be pretty short if he continues to show what he showed us. He showed us the past couple of weeks. One thing to note, though, is uh, if you guys, if you guys uh, have uh, heard about John Boy, what he said was he predicts that during late, late April, actually, um, Garcia, he, he predicts that Garcia is going to pitch, going to pitch one of those games. So, um, he's he's most likely banking on the fact that Garcia's gonna you know get some AAA get to get things going there and then after that just if there's if there's um, some good things going on with Herman then just keep him in AAA but we'll see what happens with Garcia I feel like with that situation I think with King they're more they're more likely with what's been going on, he's going to be in the bullpen at some point in the next three or four years because he's, he's shown it. He's shown it in the limited time he's had uh, in the big leagues that he's not able to go four, five, six plus. Nah, not the no. way the Yankees are using him. No, no. Yeah, he's just going to be at, at the most, he's going to be a, a guy who comes in after the starter if they're not going to stretch out Garcia, they might have Garcia start. Well, actually, I don't know if they're going to do that any, either because I think once King comes down, Garcia comes up. So True. That's a very valid point. How that works out. Yeah. They're, they're, really, they're really taking this as far as they can go with it. And I like that. I like how they're trying to be creative with their pitching staff. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. They know what they're doing. They, everybody's saying the Yankees have a ton of risk in the rotation. They do. But they're prepared. Without a doubt. Now, speaking of as, as uh, they're taking things as they, as they go, um, the Orioles, they're, uh, they're thinking about uh, uh, having Matt Harvey on the uh, opening day roster. You know, he's the dark knight, the dark knight. You know, he, he had a great run with the Mets and, you know, had some time with the Angels. 
and some time with the Royals. And now with Matt Harvey, now that there's an opportunity for him to join a team, I just, I think he's had too many opportunities. He hasn't shown himself. (laughs) I mean, he's had a ton of opportunities. When you see how the way he pitched back in 2013, even like 2013 to 2016-ish, you can dream on that comeback. I, I don't know. I don't really know how much of an impact he can have. I don't know how his velocities looked. That's the big thing with him. He hasn't been throwing as hard. I know he was kind of all right with the Reds a couple years back, but then he was bad. And I don't know what to think of Matt Harvey. It's going to be fun to see what he can do as an Oreo. I, I'm, I'm hyping. I'm buying yeah. on the dark night. I mean, I don't think he's going to be good or anything, but I want him to be good. Without a doubt. Harvey's... He's fun, man. He's fun. He's, he's awesome, but like the situation with him is, I feel like after after like uh, the 2014 playoff run, that ride, he's been overworked. He was he was overworked um, with with the Mets. Um, I don't know. I don't remember how many innings he he pitched that year, but and- post like postseason like regular season innings plus postseason all the way up to the world series he wasn't able in my opinion to shake that off and try to you know start up um the the following seasons with any type of uh you know successes that's what that's what's uh, been going on with harvey so uh you know nothing but the best but um let's see if he can uh, continue to uh grind it out in the big leagues maybe he can uh do s- surprises this year maybe he can surprise us this year. hype to see what he can do but yeah it's gonna be tough for him yes then another orioles veteran who was signed to a minor league deal what you got about him emilio so we got king felix opting out with the orioles <sighs> oh my gosh that tells me two things one he he probably didn't make the team and or two he he just didn't want to be in that organization and um it just you know he didn't want to be in a losing environment yeah i think it was a little bit of both actually i heard him say in an interview earlier in spring training that he was either gonna, he wanted to make the team he came to the orioles to make the team and if he wasn't going to make the team he'd try and look for a spot elsewhere and that's what he's doing i think he just he doesn't think he's going to make the team. Or the Orioles told him, you're not making the team. We have 48 hours to figure out what we're going to do or what you're going to do also. So, sucks. I really wanted to see him be an Oriole. Just like Harvey, I wanted. I want to see King Felix. Who can forget the perfect game in 2012? Th- those Oof. just can't be recaptured. Those are. So- it was done by the king. <sighs> so My much. God. His iconic- Time King Felix was just something like out of nowhere like i remember what was it in 2012 where there he it was a race for the cy young between him and cc and some other pitchers and yeah. i just he was just so dominant and his stats just you know like people were just they were just sleeping on him at that point one of my favorite pitchers that i've seen he was so much fun he should have won more than one Cy Young. It's just that he was on a back. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Mistake. So what we're actually going to be talking about next is um, we're going to keep it a little bit more on to something that we really haven't uh, really talked about, and that's awards. We're going to be giving out our predictions for the awards for the 2021 season, our awards for the season. Um, let's first start off with the MVPs. Tom, National League MVP, who do you got? You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. Between two, but I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. He's just such a good, he's polished. He had, he had a brief season last year because of a weird COVID situation, but this kid can rake. He is showing me that he is. If he can keep this up, he's on a Hall of Fame trajectory. He's an outstanding young player, but he's got some stiff competition. There's some awesome, awesome talent in the NL. 
Who do you got? Well, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the in the East in the NL East, and I'm gonna go with Ronald Acuna Jr. That is fair. That's totally. I'm gonna go with Acuna Jr. Um, last year for the candidates, um, I remember Ozuna was also in the running, so it was more or less just canceling each other out because they play on the same team, especially last year. Remember with uh, Voight and DJ. They basically cancel each other out. So I feel like he's going to definitely, this is a statement right here. He's going to go 40 for 40. He's going 40 home runs, 40 stolen bases. And I'll even add in at least six to seven triples. Mm. That's, That's pretty bold, bro. It's it's bold because the reason I say that is because he most definitely has the speed for it, and oh, yeah, that right that that right center area in Atlanta, um, it's just that ballpark right there. Like it, if it just taps a corner there, it zooms either to to center field or it might trickle all the way to right. So, you know, I feel like I feel like he's he's gonna. Like obviously he's broken out these last couple of years. He's going to just exceed everyone's expectations for this season. Dude, that is an awesome pick. I really wanted to pick him. I just thought Soto was a better choice. But we're, we're oh yeah agree on this one. Hopefully there's going to be some more disagreements coming up. But that's a yes. pick. The dude yes. has lost some weight. He looks even more jacked than before. His defense has gotten even better. He, Chip on his shoulder. Chip on his shoulder. They were one win away from the World Series. One win away. He has a big chip on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. His hitting even got better, and I didn't even think that was possible. So That homer that he hit uh, a couple days back, I saw it. It was just crazy. Nuts. The dude is outstanding. 40 for 40. Dude, 40 and 40. That, that's not out of the question. There was a Last- network. He said... He could get 50 50. I'm like, whoa. That's stretching it there. <laughs> like, he's got that. That's stretching it. Obviously, got yeah. talent. He is mm-hmm. an outstanding young player. You can't go wrong with Without a doubt. any of the. There's like five guys you just can't go wrong with in the NL. Yeah, good yeah. pick, man. Good pick. Yes. About the Which a- brings us to the AL. Tom, who's your AL MVP? You know what? Everybody, want, everybody says Trout. It's like a curse to not pick Trout. I'm not going to pick Trout. Okay. I'm going to pick our boy Aaron Judge because I think he's Aaron. fine to stay healthy and he's going to have another ridiculous season where he shows that he is a complete athlete, that he can not only hit home runs but also play amazing defense and run a little bit. So that's my pick. Straight and simple. Hey. Okay. You. Straight and simple. So. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm, re- I'm really thinking about two players right now, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to give you a reason as to why I was thinking the other one as well. Ooh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, okay. So this, this is going to be a big statement right now. Jose Ramirez. He's a dark horse. Okay. Dark horse. Okay. And people are going to shake their head. People are going to be like. Including me. Including why would he? Why would he pick Jose Ramirez? Like, no. No, no, no. Here's, here's my logic, though. Let's see he it. has had 30 home. He has 30 home run power and can swipe 20 bags. Easily. Easily. True. True. But. But another thing to talk about in terms of him is the fact that he can fabricate a run for the Indians. The reason I say that is because he can force on the the defenses of of teams. Although he might not seem as a quick guy, he he still intimidates the pitchers. He he intimidates um, everyone. When he comes up to bat, you, you guys – you guys might you might you guys might think oh like he's just Jose Ramirez he's not going to be like that impactful 
in my head, I'm thinking, Jose, he, he's scary. He is scary for me. He's a dark horse MVP for me. That's, that's who I'm picking. That's who I'm picking. It, it's coming out of left field, but uh, I think that's, uh, that's something that uh, I just had to mention. You know what? You know what? I actually wanted him to win the, the MVP in 2020, and I thought he should have. But here's my reasoning to thinking that I don't think he's going to be MVP material. Do we remember what he did the end of 2018 the beginning of 2019? He was bad. Capital B, bad. B-A-D. Mm-hmm. He was totally lost. He was hitting pop-up after pop-up after pop-up. But some point halfway in the 2019 season, he found it again. I would be a little worried about him just because of that, just because he's had times where he's fallen off the cliff offensively. So there is that. That's why I, I'm not – He's streaky. I'll give you that. Totally with you there. But I, I – Oh, yeah, no. But one thing that I – One thing that I would say about that, though, is the fact that over the past four years, he has, he's been in the top three in MVP. So he's inching just to get that MVP. I think it happens this year, 2021. He brings, he brings the, the Indians to, to the first or the second wild card. That's what I think is going to happen. Ooh, you're already saying the Indians making the wild card. That's a hot take right there, bro. Yep. I don't know about yep. that. Yes. I don't yep. know about that, but we'll mm-hmm. see. They're yep. going to compete for it. The Indians there. Yes. yes. All right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a fair pick. Yes. I just don't know. I don't know if he's got that run for a full season in him. He's shown that besides 2020, he has that – he's had those slumps. I mean, 2018, not as bad because it was at the very – it was like September. But then it carried on to like June True. next year. So we'll see. I think that's yeah. personally. But I, I, I don't know. It's possible that he has a slump like that in him. I hope not. I like him as a player. He's, he's really fun. I old. feel like now. Now, now that he's basically he's the main guy with with Cleveland, he has to step up, and I think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be he, people are gonna be headhunting to look for for him to perform, and I think he's just gonna perform. He's gonna hit at least thirty five home runs this season. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, he's gonna have a, a ton of RBI. Maybe, maybe he's I'm, gonna emerge. Lineup's kind of. A lot weaker than it was, but yeah, we'll see. Yes. Yep. Fine. So, um, let's move on to Cy Young. Let's move on to the Cy Young. Fine. Fine. AL Cy Young, who do you got? I was going to take the easy way and say Garrett Cole, but nah. I, I think I think Giolito, that's my pick on the White Sox. Ooh, Okay. He's my favorite pitcher to watch that's not on the Yankees. That guy has nasty stuff, throws hard, gets the strikeouts with that, that filthy curveball. Love watching that guy pitch. I think he's going to win the Cy Young. About you? What about you? That's very good. Okay, here's another, here's another hot take that I got for you. Here we go. Lay it on me. I'm picking Ryu from... From the Blue Jays. I'm going with Ryu from the Blue Jays. Obviously, Ryu has been uh, a pitcher that in the past he he's been uh he's been very good with the Dodgers. And although his age is coming up, he's 34 years old, I think he, he's gonna he's gonna be very impactful and he's gonna do a great job with, with them. So let me go on a very quick very short mini rant here. Bro, what are you talking about? What, what, what you what? talking about? So let, let's just get into the details of Hunjin Ryu. This is why I think the Blue Jays are not going to be the very good in 2021. Because everybody is obsessed with the Blue Jays being good. Because they're, they're going to beat the big bad Yankees, right? But I know we don't think that here. Thank goodness. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. They're very injury prone. It's, it's, it's not going to look pretty for them. They're, gonna, they're not going to be as good as people think. No, nah, no. Nah. But let me get back to Hanjin Ryu. Okay, so the sure. guy, 
I'm also a follower of the Dodgers. I like the Dodgers a lot. So I've watched a lot of Ryu, and he came back in 2018. He had, like, some injuries. I think he had a pretty bad injury, like, 2016. Then he didn't play almost all 2017. But he comes back in 18. He's amazing. 19, he's amazing. 20, he's also pretty darn good. But he's, in 19 even, he had injuries. He, he missed some time. And he's just the type of pitcher that's going to miss some time. And I don't know, man. He, it feels like he's the type of pitcher that can fall off a cliff at any moment. He, he, his stuff's not – his stuff has to work perfectly in order for him to be good. But can that happen again? Sure. Do I think he could collapse? Absolutely. So that's a risky pick. I'm going to tell you something now. What – in terms of – in terms of the ERA, which is which is a very interesting stat, earn runs um, is very important. When was the last time his ERA was was ballooned to three plus? You, you got a fair point there. If you look at the twenty seventeen, twenty seventeen, his ERA his ERA was three point seven seven. Yeah, man. After that, it's been it's been. Two, two, three, two, two point two three, two point two six nine, and in twenty eighteen a one point nine seven. That was when, although you know he had limited time, but still, <laughs> I'm thinking Ryu makes a resurgence. You better hope there's no injury problems. That's all I'm saying. And also the stuff. It's he walks on a very fine line. He's got excellent control and command, but that stuff could fall off a cliff. I, I don't know, risky pick, but not a bad pick. This is a risky pick. Hey, risky I'm, pick. I'm, I'm risking it all this year. I'm risking it all this year. Oh, okay, okay. I, I can't stop. Yes, I yes, I'm going out of the box. <sighs> yes, yes. I like it. I so, like it. that's how you're supposed to do it. Fair. Here we go. So National League, National League Cy Young. Who do you got? Ooh, I, again, I wanted to say Degrom, and I picked him on my fa- for my fantasy team today when I was drafting. He was my first pick. <sighs> do I want to take the easy pick here? I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna go Walker Buehler on the Dodgers. He hasn't. Mm. I think he's going to prove himself. He's going to reach a new level. He's just a ridiculously good pitcher. And he proved it in the postseason, dude. He's he's the guy who keeps that pitching staff together on the Dodgers. As talented as they are, he keeps them together because he's such a bulldog. And I think he's going to get 200 innings this year. I think it's his – it's not his – it's DeGrom's to lose, but I think he's going to take it from DeGrom, man. I really think so. He's my boy. Bring it home, Walker. Yeah, yeah. Bueller, Bueller is a great choice, 100%. I'll agree with you on that one. Yeah, dude. Now, who do you have? I'm going – This so this is with the team that uh, you do not like. You actually despise this team, so this is going to be great. You probably. <laughs> Let's hear it. The NL Cy Young Award winner, in my opinion, will be – Blake Snell. Blake Snell is coming from AL. You gotta also have to think about it like this. The AL, the AL East is just loaded with hitters. The small ball ballparks, he did a really good job in, in the three or four years that he was there. He was solid. All right. And he has to he has to play who? Who who does he have to play? Tell me who he has to play. He's going to be playing against against the the Giants, those guys, the D-backs, the D-backs. Like no, no. He is his competition is is not as is not as good as it was in the AL East. The NL West, it's just it's just laughable except for the top 2. So that's my opinion in terms of uh, who's going to win the Cy Young. He's he's just going to blow blow by this division. It's it's just going to be so much fun to see. 
You know, <laughs> I I like Blake a lot, but I don't like that he's on the Padres, and I hope he has a horrible year because I I just I don't know. <laughs> I just want the Padres to not do well, and it sounds awful to say that. As of course you don't, of course you don't. You're a dad. You're, you're a secondary Dodgers fan. You're first and foremost a Yankees fan, and you're a Dodgers fan. Dude, I always hate it when there's a team like the Padres. The, you know what they call them? The trendy team. They're the, the trendy boys. Trendy boys. And oh, know, that's that. They're super talented, but it's nuts. At least pick you, Darvish. If you're gonna pick one of the Padres, man, just pick you. Uh, so and my. No, uh, I'm going snow. The, the guy, Don't even get me started with the Rockies. Don't even get me started with the lonely Rockies. I mean, her mom Marquez is good, but <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. I love that's it. Trash about that team, but <laughs> Snell, dude, five innings a start, and also he, the Dodgers made him look bad in the World Series by forcing him to be. See, out. You say, you say, five innings a start. Innings. That was when he was in the AL East. All right. That's when he was in the AL East, Fair. which is a tough. He at least gets them to the sixth inning if he's playing against the Giants, Rockies, and D-backs. Dude, I actually that makes that that's an interesting point because I think the Padres are probably going to have him pitch a little deeper. But also, like just like yes. with two injuries, he's had some injuries, and also he's had some years where he's just not been good. Twenty nineteen, he was not that good. But I know what you're going to say. It's the AL East, and it's tough. The Yankees were beasts that year. And the Red Sox were yes. not too bad either. So, you know, I guess you can make that argument. But I, <sighs> Padres, ew, just ew at them. <laughs> this is great. This is great talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> go Dodgers. Go Yankees, oh. but also go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Let's pick a team, man. Pick a team, Tom. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is Dodgers. One A. Uh. A one B. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> okay. Comeback player of the year. This is only one award, guys. Play comeback player of the year. Who do you got? Award. I I was going to so I think I'm gonna say who I think will win, and I'm going to say who I think I would pick. I think Trey Mancini's going to win and he deserves to win because the, the guy was diagnosed with pretty serious form of colon cancer during the midst of the pandemic when hospitals were overwhelmed and all of that. This guy had to go and get treatment during all of that. He didn't know if he was going, like he didn't know how severe this was going to be, how well he'd come back from this. It seems like spring training, he looks like he hasn't missed a beat. I think he's going to win it no matter what happens with him this year. But I do think I would pick Buster Posey. For the Giants. Mm. As not, he did not play in 2020. I think he's going to have a monster year. But I think Mancini's going to win it, and he deserves to win it. What about you? What about you? I agree. I agree 100% that he, he will be the comeback player of the year, without a doubt. Because, like you said, battling cancer and just, what is it, 60% 60, 60 chance that he was going to survive – those like odds might be, you know, 60-40, but, like, there was a 40% chance that he wasn't going to make it. And just the fact that a year later he, he he's able to play, he is able to play again in a professional leagues, oof, crazy, crazy. It's inspiring, man. All right, that brings us to, without a doubt, mm -hmm. now it brings us to the Rookie of the Year. The rookie of the year. Who do you have for the AL rookie of the year, Tom? I have, you know what? I don't like the Rays. We both don't like the Rays, but Randy Rosarena. Dude, he killed, Randy. killed it in the playoffs. I mean, Dodgers kept him a little bit in check in the World Series, but he destroyed the Yankees. He destroyed the Astros. He is a ridiculously talented baseball player. I think he's he's going to win it. I think that's pretty. And he's all. What's weird is he's the thirty fourth prospect according to top one hundred. Like, like he went to the World Series. He had ten 
home runs in the playoffs. How do you rank him 34th in terms of prospects? Like, that's nuts. His teammate, Wander Franco, is much. Oh, yeah, no. Him. He's going to be clutch. He's going to be, he's gonna be a, a great player. I'm scared of him. He's going to be really good. There's a lot of really talented guys in that top 100. For him to be 34th, a lot of talented guys. It says a lot. It says a lot. It says a lot. I'm going with uh, Nick um, Madrigal. How do, you, how, do you, how do you say it? Nick Ma, Madri, Madrigal. Madrigal. Nick Madrigal. Um, what's interesting about him, though, is um, he batted 349 during 24 games last year. So he was in the big leagues. He, so he had a little bit of a little tune-up in the big leagues in the show. So uh, he has some experience. I think he's 100% a very good candidate to be the, uh, the rookie of the year. That's fair. 100%. He's got to eat. That guy can hit. Hit for average. That's rare these he only he can do it. Only struck out seven times in one hundred and nine appearances at bats. <sighs> Nuts. Dude, he's literally a beast. Yes. He's a beast at hitting the ball, and that's something that we just don't see anymore. So hope he does well. He's always been a top prospect, and I think he's gonna be a pretty darn good player. Good pick, good pick. NL. We got for All right. the NL. So I got my boy Cabrian Hayes. Okay. okay. I got my boy Hayes. He um he had a 376 average. Uh his slugging and OBP was was a solid 900, although it was some limited time. I feel like he's more than capable of uh of you know stepping up in terms of the rookie class for this year. So that's going to be something to look forward to. Oh yeah. No, I, I love Key Brian Hayes. I think he's going to be one of the best players in the league moving forward. He has a little bit of McCutcheon in him, dude. He's just, I was just going to say that. Mm-hmm. Kind of make up. I see it. Yeah, he, I see it in him. Skyrocket. It's going to be fun to watch him. He's an amazing defender. He hits the ball so hard. Oh, he, he's a fun player. Yeah, definitely a good pick. My pick? Oh, man. I would probably pick... Ian Anderson on the Braves. We Ooh, saw- Ian. Mm-hmm. He, he's from New York, upstate New York. Oh, he's an, he's an upstate boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he's got tremendous stuff. We saw him in the playoffs. He dismantled a pretty good Dodgers lineup. Yeah. He, he's just got absolutely tons of talent. Without so, a doubt, I'm his I'm curveball super, uh, is a wipeout pitch. Yes, yes, that's great. So, um, so we we've talked about the awards, the MVP, Cy Young's Rookie of the Year, comeback, and um, yeah, I think that's about wraps up the show for today. Yeah, hey. wraps up the show for today. Um, next time we'll be talking about some other um predictions in terms of who will win the divisions and some players to look out for for this 2021 season so that's going to be something to look forward to for the next for the next one that's going to be fun that's going to be fun can't wait be that. great that's going to be great to talk about well it's been fun and see you next time see you man See everybody watching. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, this what they've been waiting on? Ha ha ha. It's the Gringo and Tom Show. Let's go. It's the Gringo and Tom Show. Y'all ready to go? Late night sports talk. Y'all ready to go? Gringo be hitting this point. Hitting this points. Tom coming in and he won't disappoint. Nah. They be swinging for the fences <sighs> and striking you out. Hey, yeah. hey. Now let's see what this is all about Lego. It's the Gringo and Tom show, y'all ready to go It's the Gringo and Tom show, y'all ready to go Ready to go, River ready to go It's the Gringo and Tom show, y'all ready to go Hey, yeah. it's done right about now